Ah, the work of a beginner digital artist. Looks pretty seamless, but once you revealed the true background, let's be transparent. It's a complete mess. For this phase of my digital art journey, I was learning. Between leaving some white pixel gaps at the drawing to making a transparent character, backlighting her even though she's supposed to be leaning against a brick alleyway, so I really couldn't figure out how she could be backlit in that scenario. And I didn't give her teeth. The how? Normally an introduction like this would leave it safe to assume that this is a video dedicated to making my 2020 art self currently look inferior. But on the contrary, instead I had posted on my Instagram that there would be a background still to come. Of course you can't add a background to a character that's transparent. That would be difficult. So how did this happen? Well, basically when using black line art for digital drawing, I have my base color underneath the line art, but I don't wanna have black line art. I want it to be a darker version of the base color. So instead of coloring the line art individually, I can just lower the opacity of the line art on top of the base color. However, I had no idea how to do this at the time, so instead I put the base color on top of the line art and lowered its opacity, leaving a transparent, not as vivid result. Making the idea of a background difficult. So technically speaking, this is going to be a redraw, but also technically speaking, it's more so uh, finishing what I started, because I don't like to make promises I can't keep. So it... Are, am I saying that for three years I've been bothered by the fact that I never put a background behind this character when I said I was going to? Yes. Yes, I have. I can now be happy. Don't take me seriously, I'm kidding. Now, of course, 2020 drawing here, I did have every intention of drawing a background. I just, I drew the drawing. It was one of those guilty pleasure things. I was drawing, I was talking on Marco Polo with friends. So I was really excited learning digital art. So when I finished the drawing, I was so proud. I was like, I'm just gonna post this on Instagram. And then I'll add the background later and I guess post it again. I guess I had the intention of doing that. <laughs> of course, I did not do that which is why I'm here today making it happen. Now, of course, I'm not going to add a background behind the old drawing, not only because the drawing is just now irrelevant to how I draw digitally, but it, it it's just the pose, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> So it's more so now I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm brainstorming, working out ideas of how I would translate drawing this character to how I draw now and figuring out what, what kind of background setup I would put her in. Now I struggled at the beginning. I did some, you know, awkward <laughs> poses and outfits trying to figure out this character design because mainly it's, it's not a design that aged well. I would say it's pretty overdone now. <laughs> and so I really struggled with wanting to draw this character. So this first drawing I did and colored was trying to get to know the character again, but I knew I wasn't gonna settle on it. But I was playing with the colors to see, you know, how fun it would be. And I colored the hair using the same pencil tool I used for sketching. And I felt like it was way too textured at the time. Little did I know what I was going to do later on. <laughs> but as I said, I wasn't sold on the design. So over here, I did a million other sketches to try and figure out what to do with the character. Usually, if I'm not excited about the character, I know I'm not on the right track yet, especially for redraws. So I tried to mix things up, change the outfit, change the hair, um, start working on the background, brainstorm, to see if it would get me excited. And while those thumbnails I showed, I was, you know, ready for the background and I felt like it made sense what I had in mind for the lighting setup. Even when I started doing the final sketch for the illustration, I just was not connected. It just, it was expressive, It, but it just didn't balance out. It didn't make sense. So despite making adjustments with this first sketch, I did not stick with it. I ended up removing it and starting another sketch with the head more downward, but I realized it wasn't paying homage to the original drawing because the original drawing, her neck is kind of stretched out. And so I knew I needed to stick with that. So lightening the base sketch, once I kind of had a good idea of what I wanted, I went over it with the final sketch, which you'll see here soon. And still struggling with the design, still figuring things out. And I even went back over the background sketch again and I lowered the horizon line because it was so high up, it just didn't make sense where the character was standing. So I was a little more feeling more at ease with how it was going once I did that. 
and I started working out the final sketch. The expression to me was much better and the pose, it all made more sense and it gave the character enough life but not over the top. Then it was back to struggling with the design and the hair and everything. I thought about giving her a scarf tied around her head, which I had started with the sketch there doing that, but it's still, I was like, I'll, I'll give her curly hair, it'll be more expressive, um, but it still wasn't paying homage to the slicked back hair and everything. So I actually ended up removing the scarf and the hair is still pulled back in a way, but it's still kind of loose and curly, like, you know, she's been out all day or the wind is affected. It, everything like that, that just gives the character more life to her. After I got to a sketch that I was happy with, of course, I started with the base colors and selected all the base colors of her color scheme. Wow, I said color a lot there. And then, of course, I struggled with figuring out how to separate her transparent skirt um, to, you know, put with her. I always, I, I've done so many transparent clothes and I always forget how I do it. <laughs> I gotta have something to forget, right? Um, but I, that's the only thing I really added and embellished a little more on in terms of her design because like I said, I had to kind of stay true to the original since the whole idea was to draw this to finally add the background, right? So I wanted it to be kind of recognizable <laughs> to the original drawing, um, which is why it was also a struggle because like I said, the, I just wouldn't draw a character like that anymore. It was, it was a for fun kind of thing. With that finished up, I had basically what kind of looked like a thumbnail idea of the background with the idea of the lighting and everything. So it came the time to color everything. I approached this as a digital painting as opposed to a digital drawing, which I had done in the uh, original piece because I just, it's so rigid when I do a digital drawing and I was working against that this time because I wanted to kind of really emulate and stipulate how things have changed over time when versus how I started learning digital art and how I draw digitally now. Now I know that I don't just because it's digital doesn't mean I have to act like I'm a computer <laughs> creating the artwork. I felt like at the beginning of it, it's everything was very rigid the way I drew things and it lacked texture. Whereas now, you know, I colored the hair and I used a pencil brush to make the hair really chalky and textured. And when coloring the skin, I used a hard airbrush, um, no smudging tool, because I want to be able to not make every soft gradual shadow look so soft. I want there to be texture. Then of course I was trying to recreate the sweater there. I used multiple dotted colors in the original drawing and I used the Gaussian blur to you know, blend them together and make a multicolored sweater. And then I used one of the uh, texture brushes to give her a nice sweater texture, which was really fun. But back to what I was saying before, it was that manner, manner of now drawing this, approaching it in a paint style because I wanted that sketch to still be there to see that it's still um, loose and everything and it's still a drawing. And there's even a point where I actually Usually when approaching a painting, I will just paint right over the sketch eventually so that it's more polished. But this time around, while I did paint over the original sketch, I actually duplicated the sketch layer and erased some bits and bobs that I didn't want there, but I kept it there so that dark magenta I used to color or to sketch the character still remained intact. But Yes, here I'm just, this is always the fun part for me is shading in the skin, uh, the skin and the hair. I love to do the shading for all of those, adding in that light and figuring out how it hits the planes of the face and the shadows and everything. And the more I do it, the better I get at it, the more I figure out what kind of colors are appropriate. So instead of using a you know, dark black to add shadows, you know, on the nose or the neck, I use a dark red and <laughs> for shading light on the skin. I use like a light beige and a pink, of course, the pink is for that weird backlighting because I needed an explanation. 
And so the, the way I worked it out is the girl's leaning on an archway. And behind that archway are lanterns tied around it. And they're like bright pink lanterns that are glowing and backlighting her. And it's in the nighttime, so she's just solely being illuminated by lanterns and moonlight. And now here I am shading in the hands, um, well, adding the light more accurately. I like to leave little lines so you can see kind of the crevices of like where the bone structure of her hand is kind of um, reaching further up on her hand and also make the knuckles more evident. Now I've, I've duplicated the sketch and I erased some parts of it and then I started painting over the other version of the sketch that wasn't on top of everything so that I could create more um, light and everything more apparent so that that sketch wasn't getting in the way. But at this point I discovered I did draw like a minuscule black lines over the eyes so they were a little darker, but then I was doing the lashes and I ended up using white and it looked really interesting. So I went with that and then I just kind of got ballistic with using absurd colors everywhere. So I used lavender. Oh, and I put an earring there <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> I gave her an earring. I kept forgetting I did that and then I had it in the footage and I was like even forgetting about it in the footage. So I'm just gonna say, Put anything right there. But yes, I was using unorthodox colors like lavender to create, I guess, bounce light. You know, maybe her hair is kind of bouncing off of her skin or something. And then I used my own texture brush um, at some point to put that on the sweater. It has like these weird jagged lines that appear. And I felt like it worked because maybe her sweater has those kind of silvery threads that reflect in the light. So it was fun too, because I was using my own brushes that I made just off of messing with Procreate's default brushes and just messing with them till they're completely ruined and then I make my own brushes out of it. I'm shading in the transparent skirt, lightening it, and then I used a blue um, and I believe I set it to either overlay or screen and I created some stripe textures on this transparent skirt thing and then I used orange and I drew some circles all around it. Then it came to use another brush I've made out of messing with paint brushes on Procreate that actually just leaves a row of squares and it creates a perfect brick texture. And because it's a paintbrush, it already has some jagged edges giving it even more texture. And then I went over that with a charcoal brush to give it, yes, more texture. And I duplicated the bricks three times and there's one set of it that's the original color, another that's white and another that's dark. And it creates more um, pull towards it being three dimensional. It gives that a better illusion of that. Then I started shading in the little canopy and the little wood, you know, stand that's holding it up. And of course, um, fixing the, the janky benches I made and <laughs> polishing them up using the ellipse selection tool for the circular part of the benches and then the rectangular selection tool um, and all, setting these all to color fill to create the legs of the benches. I, I've, I've definitely grown in using the selection tool more and I used um, the spray paint brushes to create the gravel texture, which looked really just where I wanted it to be. And then of course my iPad was starting to give out on me as I worked on the grass. There were so many brush strokes that twice my iPad decided to just kick me out of Procreate because it was like, I can't, I can't with this. <laughs> you had too much detail. And of course, sticking back to that, leaving it artsy and not rigid um, in terms of digital art, I used just light flowing brush strokes to create the trees. Since they're in the background, they're kind of out of focus. If I were drawing this traditionally, I wouldn't beat myself up about not drawing them perfectly correct. And so I use the same mentality there of just making them very light, very loose since they're out of focus and they're darkened by the shadows anyway, which I did use a dark blue to go over that and make everything darker and then a black rim around it to make the bottom half of the drawing darker as well. So the character is really standing out. You can tell she's in the nighttime, she's being backlit. Then last but certainly not least, adding in the lanterns, which at the beginning were in front of the archway, but I moved them behind after working some tweaks out, changing their colors and everything, took some time to figure them out. And then of course the drawing was finished after I added some bounce lighting on the face, fixed up the hands, added detailed patterns to the clothes, and I uh, duplicated the final drawing on top of it, set it to overlay and lighten the opacity, which made the drawing overall more bold, vivid, and darker so that everything was just kind of wrapped up, sealed, 
with a bow. So here comes the finished product. <laughs> it only took three years, but I finally added a background. So I better go post this to Instagram now. <laughs> so for those followers waiting, right? But anyway, <laughs> all right. I'd like to thank you all for watching and may God bless you in your life and your art. Bye.